Hello and welcome. Throughout this entire course, I'm going to start by taking you guys and showing you how to create your very first campaign and get your very first video ad uploaded to the Google AdWords account and having it live and broadcast all over YouTube. Next, we're going to dive into the finer details and I'm going to show you how to optimize your video ad with the right keywords, the right bidding, the different video ad formats, and all the different miscellaneous options that we can apply to our video ad. After that, I'm going to show you how we can measure our results and how to pull up the reports that will show us our video ad performance. Then we are going to analyze these results and I'm going to give you some tips for optimizing your video after you receive the results to get even cheaper clicks on your video ads. It's going to be a great course and a lot of fun and I can't wait to get started. So let's go ahead and jump over to the next video. During this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first video ad campaign inside of Google AdWords. Now, if you do not have a Google AdWords account, you can sign up for one for free over at adwords.google.com. And when you get signed up, if it's your first time creating a campaign, you should see a screen that looks pretty much identical to this welcoming us. And we have an option here at the top left that says create your first campaign. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to click on that. Let that get loaded up here. Now for the type of campaign that we would like to create, we want to click this drop down menu and we want to select online video because we're going to be creating our ad for the YouTube video. So we're going to let this load up. It's going to take us to a new campaign screen. Now, once we're all loaded up here, we should have a screen, something similar to this right here. First of all, you need to give it a campaign name. So I'm just going to name this demo ad for tutorial and next up is your budget how much do you want to spend per day so i'm going to go with just five dollars for now for our delivery method if we click the blue link here and have that drop down we can choose standard which is set by default where it's going to show our ad evenly over time or we can choose accelerated where it's going to show our ad in as quickly as possible and spend our five dollars as quickly as possible so completely up to you on what kind of ad you're running i'm going to leave mine on standard for now Next up, we have our networks. I recommend leaving all three of these check marked so that you can have your ad displayed across, you know, the broadest audience that it possibly can. Leaving just one of these check marked, it's really going to minimize your audience. It's going to take a lot longer for you to get the, you know, the amount of views that you're looking to get. Next up, we have our location. Do you want to advertise to all of the countries and territories? Do you want to advertise to just the United States or Canada? Again, completely up to you and whatever it is that you are advertising. I'm going to advertise to just the United States and Canada. And for your language, you want to make sure that you choose the language that your video is in. If I have a video in Spanish, I'm not going to choose English. And you know, if my video is in English, I'm not going to choose Spanish. I'm going to leave mine on English. Next up, Google needs to know which video that we want to advertise. So you can click in here. You can start searching for your video. You can paste the URL to your YouTube video. So if I just search how to change oil, you're going to see it comes up with all these different results. So I'll choose this one as if it's my video. And scrolling down a little bit more here, we have in-stream ads and in-display ads. Now you can choose to have both of these running, which is what I recommend, or you can choose just to have one or the other running. Now in-stream ads is what you see when you're watching a YouTube video and they show you an advertisement first before the video starts. That's what an in-stream ad is. Now, the great thing about the in-stream ad is that you only pay if the viewer watches for at least 30 seconds or to the end of your ad, whichever comes first. So I know a lot of people when the ad starts, you know, you can skip the ad within a few seconds. So if they do that to your video or your ad, you do not pay for it. You only pay if they watch the entire thing or the first 30 seconds. Over on the right hand side, we can see an image of what that looks like. And I'm sure you're familiar with that if you've ever watched a video on YouTube and seen an ad. If you would like to run an in-stream ad, they are going to need a display URL and a destination URL. So for example, you could say mywebsite.com and over here on the right hand side, you can see a sample of what that looks like. It says mywebsite.com. And now for your destination URL, it could be mywebsite.com backslash 3948 YouTube click ad banner one, you know, all the different tracking you know, parameters that you're using, that would be your actual destination URL, but you don't want to put that in your display URL because that's going to look kind of ugly with all the information on your ad like that. So go with that. Now for your companion banner, 
that's what's going to be over here on the right hand side of the ad so when your ad shows there's also going to be a banner over here now you can choose to have the banner automatically generated from the video itself which is recommended or you could upload your own image so i'm going to keep mine on auto generated so it'll automatically place an image for me over there on my companion banner and that's all we have to do for our in stream ads next up we have the in display ads now this is your ad appearing on search results, related videos as a video overlay, or on the Google Network Partner websites. Now over here on the right hand side, we can see what this would look like on YouTube search results. For example, you'll be at the top for your keyword. This is what your ad would look like if it's displayed on related YouTube videos, or as a video overlay, or your ad on a partner website. So if you would like to do this, you need to choose the thumbnail that you want to use from your video. You need to give your ad a headline and two description sentences, almost like, you know, pay-per-click with Google AdWords or Facebook PPC. You need to give it a headline and then your two descriptions, as you can see over here on the right hand side. Now, when using the in display ads, you can choose to have the visitor go to your YouTube page or they can go to that specific video page that you're advertising. Either one is fine. I prefer to send them to my actual YouTube page to try to get them to subscribe and see my other links and to watch other videos, but completely up to you. Next up, we need to give this an ad name. So I will just leave this as, let's see here, demo ad number one. And now we get to choose the different platforms that we would like our ad to be displayed on. So if I click the advanced mobile and tablet options here and I click on edit, we can select where we want our ad to be shown. So for example, if I was advertising an app for your iPhone, for example, and it only worked on iPhone, I would not want to advertise to people who have, you know, Androids and Windows phones, right? Because my app is only for the iPhone. So I would come in here to the operating system. I would choose the let me choose option. And I only want to advertise to the iOS, which is the iPhone. So I'm gonna click that little arrow there. And just like that, that's all I'm advertising to. I'm gonna click on done here. And now my advertisement is only going to show to iPhone users. Last but not least, down here at the very bottom of our campaign setup, we do have a few advanced options. For example, our scheduling. We can choose to have our advertisement just start now and you know just keep going throughout the day, or we can get very, very specific and show exactly when we want our ad to be shown. We can tell the campaign to run at a certain day, at a certain time. We can create a custom schedule here. For example, I want my ad to start on the 19th. I don't want it to end. I want it to run every single day, but I only want it, want it to run from, let's say, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Let's say, for example, I want to do that. And depending on what I'm advertising, perhaps this is you know the only time that I want to advertise. So I could change all these different days to 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and my ad will only run from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Also for our ad delivery and our frequency caps, we have a few different options that we can choose for our ad rotation. We can have YouTube automatically show our ads as long as it's getting us views. So they're optimizing our ad to get us as many views as possible, or we can choose for them to optimize our ad to get as many conversions as possible. So they're only gonna show the ad if it's more likely that that visitor is going to click it and become a conversion for us, or we can have them rotate it evenly. I like to optimize mine for views because I like to get as many views and as much brand recognition as I possibly can. Also, we can limit the amount of times that the same person can see our ad. You can leave it on no cap at all, or we can limit this to, let's say, five impressions per day per each unique visitor. That means if someone's on YouTube all day, and they see our ad five times, they're not gonna see it again for the rest of that day. And once you have all the settings lined up to fit your needs, we're going to click on save and continue. Next on the final screen here is where we're going to choose our targeting and our bidding. First of all, we can give our ad a name here. We can name this demo group number one, and then we need to choose our bidding. This is how much you are willing to spend if someone watches your ad for the first 30 seconds. So I could go with five cent, for example, you can see the typical right now is between nine cents and 94 cents. And remember, you only pay this if they watch your ad for the first 30 seconds or all the way, or if they click your ad, whichever one comes first. If we click this link here, we can bid differently for in-display ads and in-stream ads. And as you can see, 
The typical bidding is a little different, or you can choose to keep it the exact same or switch it up depending on your style. Now, whatever you choose on the right hand side, you're going to see our little estimation tool over here updates depending on which options that we choose. So if we are bidding five cents per view and we keep the targeting as is, we can expect around 500 views with an average of four cent per view. So let's go ahead and narrow down our targeting over here. We have our demographics and our interest. Now for the demographics, we can click on that there. We can choose our age group. We can choose our gender and we can choose our parental status. So the video I chose was how to change your oil. So maybe I'm targeting people who are looking to become more, you know, mechanically suave. Okay. They're looking to, you know, become a little more independent when it comes to working on their car. So I'm going to choose people between 18 and 34, just like that there. So let me uncheck these. I am going to target men and women, and I'm going to target people who are not a parent, because if you're a parent and you're around the age, you're pretty busy. You don't have time to learn how to work on your car. So I'm going to click on done. Now for my interest here, let's edit this. And I am just going to start searching for a keyword like auto, for example, because I'm targeting people who are interested in working on cars. So I'm going to add auto parts and accessories, maybe auto repair and maintenance. That's perfect. And we'll go with that for now. I'm going to click on done here. And now already we are a lot more detailed in who we are targeting. We are only targeting men and women between 18 and 34 who have an interest in auto vehicles and auto repair. And once we have all of that selected, we can click on save targeting group. And just like that, we have created our first video ad campaign with Google AdWords. During this video, I'm going to be showing you how to link your YouTube account with your Google AdWords account. Now, the reason for linking the two is that once you do so, it unlocks a set of new features that you can access. For example, you will have access to additional video statistics for your ads. You have access to call to action overlays, which we will be covering later and remarketing and engagement statistics, such as your earned views and things like that. Now to actually link the two together here, I am right now logged into my YouTube account. And what you want to do is you just want to go up here and go to youtube.com backslash dashboard. And upon doing so, it's going to take us to our dashboard here where we have a navigation on the left hand side, as you can see, and we want to click the little drop down arrow that says channel. So we're going to click that one. And upon doing so, we have some new options here and we want to click on advanced. And once that loads up, there should be a little section here that says link an AdWords for video account. And we want to click the button that says link an AdWords account. So I'm going to click on that here and it's going to give us a pop-up window with three additional steps. It's going to ask us to sign in to our AdWords account. We are going to copy the customer ID that is found in the top right corner of the AdSense website. And it has a little image here where you can see where that's going to be located. And you're going to copy that customer ID and you're going to paste it here in the third step and then click on next. So I'm going to click on this link here. I'm going to head over and grab my customer ID. Okay. So here we are in the top right hand side up here is where you can see your customer ID. So you're going to copy that. Then we're going to head back over here to YouTube and you're going to paste the ID and then click on next. Now on the next screen, what they want is they want you to give a name to your AdWords account. This is just for your self-reference. So you know which AdWords account that you are linked to. So I could just say main AdWords account, just name that whatever you need to name it. And then for the permissions, I recommend, especially if this is your YouTube account and your AdWords account, I recommend leaving these three check marked. The first one here is the view counts and call to action. This is going to allow access to your video view statistics and the call to action overlays for your videos, which I highly recommend. The next one is the remarket. This will allow YouTube to show ads to people who visit and interact with your channel. Again, highly recommended. And last but not least is the engagement. And this will measure the impact of your video ads by tracking visitor behavior on your channel once they view your ads. And again, we highly recommend you leaving that as is. And once you have that, just click on finish. And just like that, your AdWords account and your YouTube account are now linked together. And if at any moment you do not want these two linked together anymore, we can just come over here to the drop down menu and go to unlink account. And just like that, it's gone and they are no longer linked together. During this video, I'm going to be showing you how to link your YouTube account with your Google AdWords account. Now, the reason for linking the two is that once you do so, it unlocks a set of new features that you can access. For example, you will have access to additional video statistics for your ads. 
You have access to call to action overlays, which we will be covering later and remarketing and engagement statistics, such as your earned views and things like that. Now to actually link the two together, here I am right now logged into my YouTube account. And what you want to do is you just want to go up here and go to youtube.com backslash dashboard. And upon doing so, it's going to take us to our dashboard here where we have a navigation on the left hand side, as you can see, and we want to click the little drop down arrow that says channel. So we're going to click that one. And upon doing so, we have some new options here and we want to click on advanced. And once that loads up, there should be a little section here that says link in AdWords for video account. And we want to click the button that says link in AdWords account. So I'm going to click on that here and it's going to give us a pop-up window with three additional steps. It's going to ask us to sign in to our AdWords account. We are going to copy the customer ID that is found in the top right corner of the AdSense website. And it has a little image here where you can see where that's going to be located. And you're going to copy that customer ID and you're going to paste it here in the third step and then click on next. So I'm going to click on this link here. I'm going to head over and grab my customer ID. Okay, so here we are in the top right hand side up here is where you can see your customer ID. So you're going to copy that. Then we're going to head back over here to YouTube and you're going to paste the ID and then click on next. Now on the next screen, what they want is they want you to give a name to your AdWords account. This is just for your self reference. So you know which AdWords account that you are linked to. So I could just say main AdWords account, just name that whatever you need to name it. And then for the permissions, I recommend, especially if this is your YouTube account and your AdWords account, I recommend leaving these three check marked. The first one here is the view counts and call to action. This is going to allow access to your video view statistics and the call to action overlays for your videos, which I highly recommend. The next one is the remarket. This will allow YouTube to show ads to people who visit and interact with your channel. Again, highly recommended. And last but not least is the engagement. And this will measure the impact of your video ads by tracking visitor behavior on your channel once they view your ads. And again, we highly recommend you leaving that as is. And once you have that, just click on finish. And just like that, your AdWords account and your YouTube account are now linked together. And if at any moment you do not want these two linked together anymore, we can just come over here to the drop down menu and go to unlink account. And just like that, it's gone and they are no longer linked together. During this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add negative targets to your campaign and your targeting groups. Now, negative targets are pretty much when you block certain demographics from seeing your ad. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Here I am. And what we want to do is we want to choose our campaign. So I'm going to choose my demo ad for tutorial. Next thing we want to do is we want to click on targets. And then down here at the bottom, we want to click on negative targets. Now there's two ways that we can do that. We can add negative targets to our target group, or we can add negative targets to the entire campaign altogether. This is up to you, but if you are running multiple targeting groups for that campaign, I recommend doing a campaign level exclusion. So let's say that I no longer want my advertisement to show to people who are interested in pets, for example. So I'm going to choose negative topics and I am going to choose pets and animals. I'm going to add that. I am going to click on negative topics again. And just like that, my advertisement is no longer going to show to people who are interested in the topic of pets and animals. Now you can come in here, you can add even more negative placements. For example, let's say there's a website called car shop, just for example, carshop.com. And let's say I don't want my ad to be placed there anymore. So I add carshop.com. I'm going to add that over here and my ad is no longer going to be shown on carshop.com. I'm going to add that just like that there and we're all set. Okay. So this is, where we're going to come to backlist. You know, you can do keywords as well. So let's say I want to add, let's say my ad keeps showing up for how to change your tires, right? Even though my video is about how to change your oil. Okay. So I, I don't want to target people who are trying to change their tires. I'm just wasting money. So I'm going to add that keyword. And just like that, my ad is no longer going to show up for the keyword, how to change your tires. So this is where you're going to come to add all the negative exclusions that you no longer want associated with your advertisement. During this video, I just wanted to cover the two types of video ad formats for your Google YouTube video ads. We have the in stream video ads and we have the in display video ads. Now there could be some confusion on when you should use which one, if you should use them both, or if you should use one or the other. And I just wanted to make this video to kind of clarify 
which ones you should use in your situation. So first, let's talk about the in-stream video ads. You should be using the in-stream video ads when you are wanting to advertise your video content before a short or long form video on YouTube. Now this means videos that are usually five minutes or longer. Okay, you don't wanna advertise and do an in-stream video ad on a video that's only 10 seconds long, okay? People are gonna skip your ad because they already know the video is 10 seconds long and they just wanna get into their video. So you only wanna do in-stream video ads for videos that are five minutes or longer that you're advertising on. And basically how it works is after the first five seconds, the viewer does have the option to skip your ad. And the reason they can skip it is because the in-stream video ad takes up the entire video, okay? They can't watch the video they are trying to watch until your ad is finished. So that's why they have the option to skip it. So when it comes to getting charged for your in-stream video ad, if your video ad is longer than 30 seconds, you will get charged when the viewer reaches the 30 second point of your video advertisement. If your video is less than 30 seconds, you'll be charged if the viewer watches the entire video. Next up, we have the YouTube in display video ads. These types of ads are usually YouTube video overlays, promoted videos, suggested videos, related videos, things like that. And you should be using this type of advertisement if you are looking to promote your video advertisement or your channel as a YouTube search result or next to a related YouTube video or inside of other websites across the Google Display Network. Now the appearance of your ad will vary depending on which ad sizes and ad formats that the content publisher support. So for example, on a website, carshop.com, their advertisement will be a different size and format as opposed to an ad on youtube.com, for example. So that just varies depending on which website is showing your advertisement at the time. Now, when it comes to being charged for your in-display video ads, you will be charged when the viewer clicks on your advertisement. So this is more of a PPC or pay-per-click advertisement as you are only paying when someone clicks your advertisement and continues to your video page or your channel. So basically it boils down to preference for these two different types of video ad formats, but I recommend choosing both of them if you are looking for the most views and traffic for your video advertisement. During this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to add a call to action overlay over your YouTube video. Now, Google AdWords for video means that any promoted video, they will allow you to add a call to action overlay over that particular video as long as it's being promoted. So here we are inside of our account and I'm just going to click on our videos tab here and underneath the video, you can see that we have an ad call to action overlay. So I'm just gonna click on that and we are going to receive a pop-up box here and we can have an headline, a display URL, a destination URL, and an image if you would like to add an image. So I could say, click to visit my website and I have my display URL, which is mywebsite.com. I have my destination URL, which is somewhere on mywebsite.com. And then I can upload an image of course, and it will appear over here. And that image could be 74 by 74. And we choose to have this enabled on mobile or not. I'm gonna leave it just like that. And I'm gonna click on save. Now basically what this means is when someone's watching our video, they're gonna see that call to action overlay. And it's important to note that this call to action overlay only applies if the video is being watched on the video watch page or your channel page. If your video is being shown as an in display video ad on someone else's video, that call to action will not be shown. During this video, I want to quickly go over the estimation tool for your targeting groups and your campaigns so that you can realistically know what to expect when you are running your advertisements. So here we are inside of my targeting group which you should be familiar with by now. And for my max cost per view, let's say I'm gonna go with 10 cent. Notice on the right hand side, our estimation tool pops up and basically it breaks down what we can expect to achieve with our video ad based on our budget and how much we're willing to spend per view and also our demographics and our targeting. So as of right now, as you can see per day, we can expect anywhere from 2,000 to 9,000 views on our ad and we can expect to pay five cents per view. Now, if we do this on a weekly basis, we can expect anywhere from 14,000 to 63,000 views on our ad at five cents per view. Now, this is updated in real time. Anytime I change my bid, my budget, or my demographics, this is automatically going to update. So if I change this to 25 cents per view instead, we can see that it changed it from 2K to 7K, 
with a six cent average per view. Now, if we go down here to our demographics and I change this, let's say I want to focus on maybe 18 to 34. So I'm going to uncheck all of this here. I only want to focus on females, click done. And I want females who are interested in the topic of beauty and fitness. So I'm going to add that, click on done. And as we can see with these demographics and budget, I can expect anywhere from 1,000 to 6,000 views per day at seven cents per view. Now, if I bring my budget back down here, let's see if it makes a big difference. And yes, it does. 2,000 to 9,000 views per day at five cents per view. You also notice that we have this little Venn diagram over here underneath our estimation tool. And this is basically just showing us who could potentially see our advertisement based on the demographics and the targeting that we have chosen. So as of right now, we have six different demographics and one topic chosen for our default audience. Now be too careful not to choose too many different settings or filters for your targeting group, because remember all these different filters have to be met in order for your ad to be shown. So if you choose too many, that's going to cut down on the amount of views that you can receive per day. During this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can copy your campaigns, your ads, and your targeting groups with just a few clicks of your mouse, instead of having to recreate all that information. So inside of our dashboard, I'm going to click on the targets groups that we have here. And let's say that I want to copy these targeting groups to my new campaign, for example. So I'm just going to check mark both of them or just one or the other. If you only want to copy one or the other, we are going to click on more actions and we're going to click on copy targeting groups. From here, we need to choose our destination. And for me, I want to copy them to my new campaign. So I'm going to click on that there. We can choose how many of these copies we want to actually copy over there. And then we can just click on copy and it's going to go out there and it's going to automatically copy them for us to our new campaign as we can see here for our ads if we click on ads here it works in pretty much the same way i am going to click on my ad here i'm going to click on more actions and go to copy ads and let's say again i wanted to add this to my new campaign so i'm going to choose new campaign i am going to choose how many of these copies i want to send over there I can choose if I want to automatically add this video to my two targeting groups, or if I want to unselect those and then create my own targeting groups later on for that video, I'm going to leave it selected as is, and then click on copy. And again, now I have my video applied to my new campaign automatically. Now the campaigns might be a little different here. I'm going to select my demo ad for tutorial campaign. I am going to go to more actions and copy campaign. And we can just choose how many times we want to copy this campaign. Maybe I want to copy it twice. And then from here, we can include all the different ads and copy those as well. We can also include all the different targeting groups and copy those as well. So I'm going to leave those check marks. because I want to copy all that information. We can also choose our schedule for this campaign when we want it to run. And when we copy our campaigns, it's going to copy our budget, our default targeting groups, like our demographics and our language. So I'm going to click on copy. And that's going to go out there for us. And Google AdWords is going to make a copy of that campaign twice for us since I wanted two copies. And now we have four different campaigns running at the same time. And that's just how easy it is to copy your campaigns, ads, and targeting groups. During this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add content label exclusions to your targeting groups. Now, basically, when you hear content label exclusions, just think about like movies and television where you have PG-13, PG mature, not yet rated, things like that. Well, that applies to YouTube videos as well. And maybe you don't want your video advertisement showing on certain types of videos. Okay. So we're going to exclude those from showing on our video ads. So here I am on one of my campaigns. I went to the targets tab up here and we scroll down. We're going to click on the negative targets drop down menu here. And by default, you can see that the categories adult, mature, and not yet rated are automatically blocked. If you want to allow these, you can simply click on the check mark here and then click on remove. And that's going to allow your video advertisement to be played on videos that are rated mature. If you want to add additional ones, we're going to click on the negative target drop down menu. We're going to go to category exclusions and we can select other categories that we do not want our YouTube videos to be played on. Perhaps I don't want teen. And maybe I don't want games. I only want my videos to be shown on videos that are suitable for families, all audience or younger teens. Okay. I'm going to click on save. And just like that, my category exclusions are up to date. And now I don't have to worry about my video being shown to the wrong audience. 
During this video, I'm going to show you how you can measure your video ad performance and how to keep track of all the statistics and make sure that your ad is performing up to par with your expectations. So here we are inside of the dashboard and we basically have three different tabs. The first one being the ads tab that we see here. Now on the ads tab, this will allow you to view the ad performance in a particular format, whether you're using in display or the in stream video ads, and you can also preview your ads here as well. From here, we are able to see the impressions that we have, the views, the view rate, the average cost per view, and the total cost that we spent on this advertisement, along with the clicks that we had on our ad. Next up, we have the video tab. Now this tab provides more meaningful context on the video itself. They focus on statistics that show you how much of your video actually got played, how, how far people made it into your video. And we can actually click the name of the video here and it's going to take us to another screen that shows us a lot more statistics, a lot of in-depth statistics, audience retention, the demographics that watched your video, and all of that important data that you need to see when analyzing the performance of your ad. And last but not least, we have the targeting group tab here. And basically this one is going to show us how each individual targeting group has performed for your ads. Now this is very important so that we can see which groups are converting well and which groups are not converting that well when it comes to being successful with your advertising. Because if you ever want to get down to those one to two cent per click advertisements, this is what you need to focus on and really narrow down and find that target group that fits best with your advertisement. So we can see the impressions, the views, the view rate, the average cost per view, the total cost that we spent, the clicks, and how much of the video was watched per each individual targeting group. So this is the most important information and you are going to need to keep track of all three of these tabs throughout your video advertisement so that you can see what's working, narrow it down so that you can get down to those one to two cent clicks. During this video, I'm gonna show you how you can generate a report of your video ad performance with just the click of a button. Now this is useful if you need to share the report with someone who doesn't have access to your AdWords account, or if you just like to save these type of things to your hard drive for future reference. And we can generate these reports for any kind of filtering that you need. For example, we can choose our campaign. So I'm gonna choose demo ad for tutorial. You can choose particular or specific targeting groups, even a specific ad, and we can even choose different segments to show inside of our report. So let's say I wanted to segment my report by network so I can see how many views came from YouTube, how many came from the YouTube search, and how many came from the Google Display Network. I could do that by choosing this segment, and all we have to do is click this little download button right here, and it's gonna generate that report for us based on all the filters that we have chosen and deliver it to us in the CSV format. During this video, we're going to be talking about remarketing to your YouTube viewers. Now, if you don't know what remarketing is, it's basically when someone takes a certain action on your YouTube channel or your YouTube videos, you're gonna save that person's information to a list, and then you can market to that list later on. Okay, it's very, very powerful, very beneficial, and every single business I know of uses the remarketing strategy. So basically, what I can do is I can set up a list for people who watch a certain video, okay? Now, when everyone watches this certain video, they're gonna get saved to my list. And then I can make an ad tailored to that particular list. So if I have a promotional video that says, you know, download my weight loss book for $19, okay? And it's a video, it's about working out, and at the end, I pitch my book for $19. So I have 10,000 people who watch that video and I save them to my list. And now I can make another advertisement just for those 10,000 people that say, hey, you didn't buy my $19 book. Here's a discount, grab it now for $15 or $10 or whatever it may be. I'm sure you get the idea. We can retarget these people with even more advertisements or offers and it's really, really, really effective. So the benefits of this, obviously, it's gonna improve your ROI, right? You're advertising to people who have already shown an interest and demonstrated they are interested in your product or service, so your ROI can go through the roof. You get much better pricing since you have a very, very detailed targeted audience. The pricing is much, much better. And the types of lists that we can create for our remarketing purposes are we can target people who watch a video, any of our videos, we can add those people to a list. We can target people who take some kind of action, like they like, dislike, comment, or share any of our videos. We can add them to a certain list. 
We can target people who view our ad as an in-stream ad. We can target them and add them to a list or people who visit or subscribe our YouTube channel. So we have all these different angles that we can target people and add them to a certain list. So how do we how do we create these lists? Let's go ahead and dive in. Here I am at my dashboard right now. And on the left-hand side under shared library, you should see video remarketing list. So we're gonna click on that. And as you can see right now, we don't have any list created. So I'm gonna click on this plus sign up here to create a remarketing list. Now, in order to do this, your YouTube account does have to be linked with your AdWords account. So make sure it is linked. And the first drop down option here is what kind of list are we gonna create? Are we gonna create one for people who view our videos, people who visited our channel, viewed a certain video as an ad, liked our video, disliked our video, commented, shared, all these different options. So I wanna target people who viewed any video from my channel. Sure, let's say I have a full channel on weight loss products and I wanna target people who viewed my channel because that obviously means they are interested in weight loss products. So you need to select the channel name if you have multiple channels linked to your AdWords account. You need to select which channel you wanna target here. We need to give this list a name. So I can name that weight loss viewers who viewed any video. Next up, we have the membership duration. How long do you wanna keep these people on your list? The max is 540 days. I'll just put mine at 540, but if you're running some kind of timed offer or you know after a few weeks where they're no, they are no longer relevant to your offer, then you might wanna add you know just 14 days or whatever it may be. Do you want this list open or closed? I'm gonna keep mine open because I'm still looking for people to be added to my list. If for any reason you need to close this list and you no longer want to add new people to it, you can come in here and you can close your remarketing list. And then we can start with an empty list or we can include users from the last 30 days. I'm gonna include users from the last 30 days and click on create list. And we can see that our list has been created. It's open, members are here for 540 days. And right now I have zero users. And now that we have that, we can now create an ad revolving around this list of people. We can create an ad just to be shown to the people who get added to this list. So if I go back to my campaigns here, let's say I want to create a new campaign and I go through here, I fill out all this information so it fits my needs. I'm gonna to go to the bottom here, I'm gonna save it and continue. And for my targeting group down here, I'm gonna narrow my targeting group. I am going to choose remarketing. And now we can see the list that we have created. So I'm gonna click on add then I'm gonna click on done and save that. And just like that, this entire campaign is only going to be shown to people who are on my list, people who have already watched my videos, people who have already shown an interest in my videos. I am creating this ad just to be shown to them. So I'm sure you can see the power behind remarketing. And it's one of the most important things that you can do for your business and your advertisements on your YouTube video ads. During this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up your payment method for your Google AdWords account, because this is very critical because if you don't have a payment method active, then your ads cannot run. And as you can see on my screen right now, I have all these different errors and notifications because I have yet to set up my payment method and they're letting me know that my ads are not going to run until I set up my method. Now, setting up your payment method is actually very, very simple. And what I'm gonna do is, if you have all these different errors here, you can just click on the fix it issue and set it up that way. But if you have yet to create your ad yet, and you're looking to go ahead and set up your payment information, we can just click on this gear symbol at the top right over here, and then go to billing. And if you have yet to set up your payment information, it's gonna automatically redirect you to that screen to go ahead and get that set up. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and select your country where your billing address is located. So I'm gonna select the United States and then go ahead and click on continue. And now on the next screen, this is where they need all your different information regarding your payment method. So you can decide if you are a business or an individual, they need your name and address and all your different contact information. Next up is how you pay. By default, it's gonna be automatic payments. And what that means is you are going to run ads and generate a cost before you pay. And once you reach a certain threshold, Google AdWords is gonna automatically bill your credit card or your bank account. Some countries, you can choose a manual payment. And what that means is you will pay up front a certain cost, and then you will run advertisements until your budget is gone. You are prepaying for your advertisements. But for the United States, as of right now, all we can have is automatic payments. Next, you need to choose what you're gonna pay with. Are you gonna link a bank account or are you going to link a credit or debit card? And when you select either one of these, it's gonna give you a drop-down box where you can fill out this information or with your bank account information. 
After that, we need to choose the billing communication language, which is English for me, and then you can read your terms and conditions. You can print this if you need to, and you will need to agree to these terms and conditions, and then click on complete sign up. And that's all you have to do to set up your payment method for your Google AdWords account. During this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can update your billing information, and this includes removing old payment methods that you don't want to use anymore, or even adding new payment methods. So here I am on the dashboard right now, and if we go up here to the top right in the gear symbol, we're going to click on that, and then we're going to click on billing. And once that loads up, you can see that we have a brief overview of our account, which includes our current balance, how we are paying, and our contact information. Now on the billing settings on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on that. And once that loads, you can see again, we have our account details, our name, our information. You can see how we are paying right now with our automatic payments. And you can see our current form of payment, which is a debit card I entered. And if I wanted to add a new payment method, I would just click on the new payment method button here. And that will take me to a screen where I can add a new bank account or debit card. Now, if you would like to remove this payment method from your account, you would have to add another one in order for this one to become eligible to be removed. And if you have multiple payment methods, you will have a primary payment method and your primary method cannot be removed but the other ones will have a delete option underneath the edit option that we see here. 